Well, a historic decision at Exculture. We will not be using Turnitin again. And uh, let me explain to you why. But I guess my message is more about a bigger issue, and that is plagiarism detection in academia. Plagiarism by students, plagiarism by, by professors, and why plagiarism detection is essentially dead. Why plagiarism can no longer be detected, um, and what to do about it. So first, a little bit about Exculture's experience so you know what prompted this decision, and then more about the general issue of plagiarism in academia, a big, important, perhaps the most important decision in academia. So we have been using Turnitin at Exculture for 14 years, faithfully every single semester. Every report submitted by Exculture students was submitted through Turnitin and checked for plagiarism. Now, two things have happened in the last few weeks that resulted in this decision to stop using Turnitin. Uh, let me explain what those decisions are or what those developments are that led to this decision. So, one, I received a few emails lately from Turnitin informing me or telling me something like this. Um, they told me that they were conducting routine Turnitin account checks and they noticed that many of the students enrolled in my course in Turnitin are not students from my university. And so they were wondering what's going on. And then uh, later I also received an email from my own university saying that I need to delete those students. Now, if you know what Exculture is uh, so and why I use Turnitin, you know that we have about 6,000 students from about 160 universities in a given semester, 70 countries or so. And so I receive submissions from all around the world. So like, for example, this semester, about 350 students in Exculture are from my own university, whereas everybody else, like 6,000 more, are from other universities, almost 200 universities in like almost 100 countries. And the reason we used Turnitin all these 14 years is because my primary need at that time was to be able to receive hundreds and hundreds of submissions from different teams from students who are not my students. The very first time when we did Exculture, I actually used uh, or asked students to submit their work by email as email attachments. And as you can imagine, that didn't work very well. Uh, some files were too large for email, manually downloading each email with an attachment, sorting, it's just, it's a mess. And so at that time, we didn't have Dropbox, we didn't have Google Docs, so we couldn't obtain submissions any other way. And so Turnitin was my solution, literally not so much for plagiarism detection, but for my ability to receive submissions from different schools. Like, for example, I could not use Blackboard and then later Canvas that we use um, as a ma learning management system at my school because it would only work with my own students. Whereas in Exculture, we have students from all around the world. And so Turnitin allowed me to receive hundreds, thousands of submissions from students all around the world without them being students at my university. It worked beautifully. Very grateful. Thank you, Turnitin, for 14 years. You really, really, really helped us. And so interestingly, I did not use my university account. So it was another university at a different continent that would, was gracious enough to create an account for me in 2011, I believe it was. And so they just said, yes, we like your project, we support it, we see your problem, why don't you use an account, we set it up uh, for you here, and so we will use our institutional subscription to help you. Very grateful for that, as I said, worked very, very well for us all these years. Now, a couple weeks ago, as I said, I got an email from Turnitin saying that too many of your students in your course are from different universities. What's going on? And then my own university contacted me and said, you need to remove them. And so first I was trying to explain to them, well, the whole point of my project is that I have students from all around the university, including my own, and I cannot remove them or, you know, the reason I use it is because they are not from my university. So otherwise I would be just using Canvas at my school. 
But then I called a friend, so I have a colleague who is a developer, um, uh, a senior developer at Turnitin, just asking what's going on and what we can do. And here is what he shared with me. I will not share the name for obvious reasons, but he said something like this, and that's the second very important development. He said, ever since ChatGPT and other generative AI tools came about, plagiarism detection became essentially impossible. So obviously, if students still copy paste and submit exact wording that they like literally do control C, control V and copy the text, yes, turn it in, unit check, other tools for plagiarism detection will be able to detect what they call similarity. So if five or more words match, they know that it's similar. It may not necessarily be a plagiarism. It could be a legitimately quoted extract from another text. So it could be, you know, a quote but it does detect when the text matches. But what ChatGPT does, it allows you to paraphrase. And so students very quickly learned that it's just foolish to submit the exact copy-paste uh, of wherever they copy-paste of. So online sources, uh, friends, papers. So they would copy-paste, but then they would upload it to ChatGPT, Perplexity, uh, Bard, Gemini, um, Bing, Copilot, Claude, whatever tools they use, and they say, say the same things, but rephrase every sentence. So basically, uh, you know, say the same things in different words. Moreover, smart students know that if you simply ask it to rephrase, it often would, you know, produce text that looks more like, you know, Shakespeare wrote it, not a student. So smart students would always add and write it in the language of, you know, like a 10 year old or second year business student who is non native English speaker. And so ChatGPT will actually embed some, you know, um, errors or, or, or dialect or some other, you know, uh, elements of speech into that document that you as a student, you know, second year business student, non-native English speaker is likely to make. And once that is done, uh, Turnitin, um, Unicheck or any other software is not able to detect similarity, plagiarism. So none. We did notice at Exculture that um, the average similarity index dropped significant, significantly last semester and two semesters ago to some lesser extent, but we already saw it. So it coincided with the rollout of, of Chat GPT. By now, students know how to use it. And so I suppose they still copy paste as much as they used to, but now they use paraphrase and turn it in becomes useless in this case. And uh, they, I, I don't know, I mean, they may still claim that they are able to catch a plagiarism, but the truth is they can't. I mean, they look for exact word matches, maybe like different order, but still in the same sentence. And once it's paraphrased by ChatGPT, undetectable, undetectable. So unfortunately, and uh, so that's, that's the sort of big development. And as a result, I was told that Turnitin started seeing a lot of clients leaving the company, so unsubscribing. So if you cannot detect plagiarism, why would we pay for the license, for the subscription? And so that's why they started reviewing all of the accounts. Uh, apparently there are ways to um, sort of sell your Turnitin subscription. I didn't quite understand it, but I think some professors or some users of Turnitin would allow students to submit their work to their account and for some fee, check it for plagiarism before they submit it to real professors, something like that. And so that's why they're looking for, for accounts where you have submissions from different universities. And so they're trying to crack down on these illegitimate um, uh, illegal uses and violations of um, user agreements. So my case kind of looks like that, but obviously it's a very different case. So we, we are not cheating. But in any case, that, that's what prompted the review. That's what prompted those emails to me. I'm not sure we probably may be able to still negotiate something. Maybe we can pay something extra. I don't know. But first, when I received those emails, I panicked. I thought, well, if Turnitin bans me, how will I use, how will I receive submissions from students from all around the world? I mean, what will I do? And then it occurred to me, oh, so many tools available now. Uh, Dropbox file request, Google Docs file request, Google Forms, Microsoft Forms, any data collection software from SurveyMonkey to Qualtrics, they do have an option to attach file. So not a problem anymore. So I have many options here. Now, the second thing is, well, will we be still checking work for plagiarism? And I suppose we can, shouldn't be a problem. But then again, uh, does it even make sense to check work for plagiarism? I mean, the only thing it can now catch is if the student is 
literally copying and pasting and not changing anything. And again, from what we understand, students do paraphrase now routinely before submitting their work. And if they don't do today, or if some of them don't do today, believe me, they will tomorrow. So plagiarism detection becomes impossible. Um, Turnitin, Unicheck, a few other companies, I believe, also experimented with what they called authorship detection uh, or authorship authentication. So apparently they were trying to see if two documents were written by the same author. And so if you have your students' uh, samples uh, of work, then you have another submission. You can check if it was written by the same person, but that's not so much for plagiarism. It's more to detect ghostwriting. So if you hire someone else to write your paper, but then again, with uh, ChatGPT, I guess it becomes difficult and impossible either. Also, many tools, and I tested about 20 of them, literally 20, maybe even 25, that claim that they can detect uh, GPT or gener uh, AI-generated content. They don't work. We tried so many of them, they don't work. They give you some sort of probability that it was written by AI, but it's completely bogus. So uh, I submitted some of my work that I know I wrote every single word myself, not even quotes, and it was not, sorry about that, and it was not accurate. I asked ChatGPT to generate some text and uploaded it, and it didn't really recognize it. There may be some more or less probability, but again, generative AI changes so quickly and evolves so quickly that even if some of them were reliable half a year ago, they are not today anymore. So that is also gone. And so for that reason, we will not be using Chad, uh, sorry, uh, Turnitin. First, I'm not even sure if I will be able to use it. And Turnitin, if you're watching, again, I'm so grateful for your help to Exculture. Over 120,000 people have gone through this project, in, in part thanks to you. We built cross-cultural bridges. We connected people from hundreds of, uh, dozens of countries, over 100 countries. So uh, we, we have done a good thing. So we, we made this world more connected. Um, our students became more culturally intelligent, less prejudiced, more interested in working with people from different countries. Very, very important project, and we have empirical evidence to say that it made the world a better place. And if somehow you are still able and willing to help with such an important project, I would be so much grateful. I would be grateful. At the same time, if you believe that, you know, I shouldn't be using your system, that's fine. So we will not be using it again. So we have other ways to do it. But the bigger question here is not so much turn it in per se, but rather, so now that we cannot detect plagiarism, and again, don't get me wrong, we cannot, I mean, this is, you know, understand it, we cannot detect plagiarism anymore. So the question becomes, what's now? So is now cheating allowed? I mean, what do we do? And so cheating is such a big problem in academia, uh, students, professors, authors, what do you do with that? I mean, it's become quite an issue. So in any case, that's op that opens up a very interesting new frontier, and we don't really know where it will lead us. Maybe in half a year, uh, AI will evolve enough to detect other AI-generated content um, reliably. Maybe that will change. Maybe there will be some other approach to detecting plagiarism. But the truth is, as of today, as of February 2024, there are no reliable tools to detect plagiarism as long as the student uses ChatGPT to paraphrase copy-pasted content. And to my knowledge, most of them do. Again, those who don't will tomorrow. And so, yeah, that changes everything. So if you're an Exculture professor, so this semester students will have to submit their work not through Turnitin, as they have done uh, for the last, what, 55 rounds of Exculture, but we will have to do it uh, through a different tool, and I'll send the instructions soon. Uh, but yes, this opens up a very, very interesting set of questions and uh, questions that I don't think anyone has answers to. Thank you.